Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. Today we are going to talk about falling objects and their motion under gravity. So we've looked at some examples of our equations of motion uh, for objects moving. And in this case, we're going to look at places at, at motions within a constant gravitational field. And what we find when we start looking at gravity is first of all, all objects will fall at the same rate in a gravitational field. It does not matter the mass of the object. So if you drop a hammer and a feather, they will strike the ground at the same time. Now that is counterintuitive to us here on Earth because we tend to know that a hammer is going to hit the ground a lot faster than a feather will. But that is only because of air resistance. If there were no atmosphere and you do this experiment in a vacuum, you can find that these will occur and will fall at the same rate. And in fact, this experiment was done on the moon during the Apollo 15 mission where a hammer and a feather were dropped and were seen to drop at exactly the same rate and hit the ground at the same time. So this would be an example of free fall where there are no other forces involved. So just the gravitational force pulling things down. Now the acceleration due to gravity is a constant on the Earth or pretty much a constant at least and for our purposes we will just use it as a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. If you you can it can be either positive or negative depending on the coordinate system that we use. So if you use up as positive value then g is negative because g is pointing downward so it would be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. However, if you want to use down as positive, then you can have g as a positive value. It just depends on how you set up your coordinate system. And as long as you are consistent and use either up as positive for everything, for velocity, for displacement, and for acceleration, either one of these can work just fine. However, let's go ahead and look and define our equations using the upward direction as positive. And we have our equations. These should look rather familiar from a previous lecture in which we looked at motion. The only thing that we've changed really is the displacement is now a y value because it's up and down. And acceleration has been replaced by g. So instead of a an unknown acceleration, g is now a known value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And you will just use 9.8 here because the negative portion has already been put in. That's why we have the negative signs here. So what we want to look at then is we've done a few of these examples with uh, ordinary motion up side to side motion. Let's look at some examples in a gravitational field. So our first example is looking at a person at the edge of a cliff. And if you threw a rock straight up with an initial velocity of 13 meters per second. So we see that here. So our velocity of 13 meters per second. The acceleration is pointing downward always for a gravitational. So it's a or you could call it g just as easily negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then what is the position as it falls to Earth at one second, two seconds and three seconds. And in all cases for our class, we're going to neglect things like air resistance. That would very much complicate the problem and make it much more difficult. So if we can neglect air resistance, what would happen? What would the position and velocity be as the object falls? So we started off with our little diagram there. Let's go ahead and move that and start writing down our known values. So we've drawn our sketch. What do we know? Well, we know the initial position is zero. We define that to be where we're starting. We know that the initial velocity is 13 meters per second. And we know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Then what we, what are we trying to find? Well, let's start off with four at time one second, let's find the position. So here is our equation, which relates the final position to the initial position, the initial velocity, the acceleration and the time. So what we have is we can put our initial position in, we can put our initial velocity in, 
and we can put our acceleration in and we also know the time is one second so that time will go in here and in here. So when we put all of the numbers in here what we get is uh, this and then we want to do the calculation here and what we would find is that the final position is positive 8.10 meters. Now what does that mean when we see a positive value there? it means the displacement is still upward. So it is still higher than where it started. And that means it is above, up above its starting posi position. What we do not know is whether what's, where it's moving. Is this still moving upward or moving down? We don't know that at this point. And that's going to be our next, posi next part is to find the velocity. So is it moving upward in the positive direction? or is it moving downward in the negative direction? So either way, we can, we'll have to figure that out. So let's take a look at that next portion. And what we're gonna see now is same, same problem. Now we're finding the velocity. So we have our same variables that we know. Our equation for the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity minus the gravitational constant times the time. And if we put our numbers in for these, we know, of course, that the initial velocity is given right here, the gravitational constant, and t is still one second, so we know all of the values here. We can plug them in. So we will calculate and find out that the velocity is going to be 3.20 meters per second. And what does that mean? Again, it's a positive sign, which means that it is moving upward at this time. So after this first second, the, the velocity is still positive, meaning it's still moving upward after one second. And we know the position at which it's moved. So the next step is to find this at two and three seconds. Now I'm not going to do all that calculation here for you. I'm going to have you go ahead and look at that for yourself. So do the same calculation. Only thing you're doing is changing the time to two seconds and then to three seconds. Follow through the same calculation and you should find your positions to match these and you should find your velocities to match these ones. So for at two seconds you should find that it is still above where it started but it's now moving down because its velocity is negative. After three seconds you should find that the position is now below where it started and that the velocity is negative and even faster. So I ask you to go ahead and do those do those examples for for two and three seconds and see if you can match the numbers given in the table here. Let's instead go ahead and look at another example with it's slightly different. Let's look at an example where we throw a rock downward with the velocity of 13 meters per second. So now we're throwing it down instead of up and we want to find the velocity of the rock when it is 5.10 meters below its starting point. So in this case, velocity is negative down. Acceleration is still negative going down. And we want to figure out what its velo final velocity will be once it's moved that certain distance. So let's go ahead and start with what we know. Here are our known values, our initial position, our initial velocity, and of course, the acceleration due to gravity. And if what, are, what is unknown, what we're trying to figure out is the final velocity. And for that, we would use the equation that is given by the velocity final squared is equal to the initial velocity squared minus 2g times the change in position. And we can put the values in that we know for these, our initial velocity of 13 meters per second, the acceleration due to gravity, and we know that the final position, which I did not write up there, is 5.1 meters. The initial position was zero, so 5.1 meters is the initial. Zero is the final. And if we put all of those numbers in, then we find our calculation. I'll put all our numbers in. We get our calculation here. And if we multiply all of those out, we find that this velocity squared is 268.96 meters squared per second squared. 
Then we take the square root to get the velocity as being plus or minus 16.4 meters per second. Now the question would be, is it positive or is it negative? So we would need to be able to figure that out. But we can reason in this case that because the velocity is in the same direction as the acceleration, the velocity is only going to continue to become more and more negative. So it is only going to continue to increase in uh, magnitude. So it's since it's already negative, it's going to continue to get more and more negative. So since our rock is heading down, that means the final velocity is going to be negative 16.4 meters per second. So here we can reason out that it's going to be negative because it's thrown downward. There's no way that it is going to be now all of a sudden have a positive upward velocity when it is thrown downward and being accelerated downward. So that's a couple of examples here uh, talking about the uh, falling objects in a gravitational field. Let's finish up with our summary and a couple of the main things that we covered. First of all, if we look at the absence of air resistance, everything falls at the same rate. And this was demonstrated on the moon in the Apollo 15 mission. The acceleration in free fall problems is given by the gravitational constant here on Earth of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Otherwise, the kinematic equations that we used previously remain essentially the same. So that fit finishes up this lecture on falling objects. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.